Thank you very much, Atze. Thank you very much, Pavel, for your dynamic presentation. We had, indeed, uh, quite a few questions. So I will just present them. OK, the first one is a um, question. And it's uh, UNEP, uh, uh, WHO, ASHRAE, UNCSB, building rating systems like lead and brium, et cetera, are working on various aspects how your work is inclusive of all these organization work? Who would like to answer? Well, it's probably a question to me. Um, well, I would say that our work should be included in their work. Uh, this is, should be the other way around. Um, what we suggest is a roadmap of the uh, systematic approach to design the ventilation requirements based on the defined criteria for the exposures uh, using the WHO. There is a close connection to the WHO. Even ASHRAE is referring to WHO, and some of the uh, rating systems are doing uh, the same. So uh, as I say, um, basically, uh, uh, those organizations, uh, uh, there is some, uh, uh, we, to some extent, there is a, some, uh, we address some of the aspects that uh, are included in their work. Some of that work also, I know that LEED is now looking at the uh, labeling of building materials. So that, that will be also some uh, addressed over there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, a radiately cooling building has a smaller air plenum because of the decentralized approach in cooling and dehumidification of indoor air. Hence, will this affect the airflow rate needed to ensure good indoor air quality? Well, it's probably the question to me. Um, in our approach, we want to uh, uh, disconnect the, the ventilation that is used to, uh, uh, to treat, uh, to provide the thermal environment or the thermal comfort and ventilation that is uh, uh, provided to control exposure. So uh, no matter how you design your plenum, you need to design it so it delivers the, the air that is required because of the health aspects or to control the exposures uh, based on the health uh, endpoints. Thank you. Um, the next one is how you intend to export this technology, this work, to developing nations? Maybe I, c I can shortly react to that. Please. Yeah. Um, I'm just remembering uh, some schools I saw a few years ago in Nepal, for example, and, and I'm very aware that there's other, other problems in, in developing countries than just indoor air quality, for example, uh, just having books and, and things to write with. but. Um, so I think often with very simple technologies, you can have very good results. For example, if you don't want it to overheat, just make sure that windows on, on two sides can, can open up and that you don't have any direct sun coming in because you have a tree in front of the room, uh, in front of the, the window. I think generally you can say that, that specific technology uh, should, should, should tune in with what's possible on the location and what the budgets are, and, and, uh, and, and, and so that's... You can say, in general, this technology works everywhere. Thank you. Um, do you want to react, Pavel? Well, I, I think there are a lot of questions, but it's an excellent question. I think uh, be, be creative in the developing nations. Remember, air quality, ambient air quality is important when you use uh, pa passive, uh, passive symptoms, sim 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 systems to provide the air. Uh, but of course, be creative. Don't rely only on air conditioning and ventilation because it may not always be, you know, the right solution. That's Thank you. Uh, why is there a lot of differences in the flow chart? Each European country has a different regulations. Maybe health is in in, in each country is considered in a different way. I, I think uh, this is what Husband is trying to address: is basically to use a set of guidelines which uh, can be unifo uni uni uniformly used uh, all over uh, the Europe. And that, that would be the reference values uh, for the setting the ventilation requirements. Then probably the differences, uh, there will be less differences in the requirements in, uh, in different countries. Also, if you think about the differences, it's because, because uh, uh, there, are, there could be different levels of comfort that are defined, uh, defining the ventilation requirements, whereas health is a one is a terminal. I mean, uh, either you are healthy or sick. So uh, basically, if you modify or if you follow the um, the pathway of health vent, you probably you would reduce the differences in flow rates across different European countries. 
if I may add to that very shortly, uh, for example, recently we had an adjustment of the uh, requirements for schools in the Netherlands, and, and from, from about 6 to 8 liter per second per, per, per child. And, and it, 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 I think there's a lot of politics involved. Like if, if, if the, in this case, Parliament was convinced that health of children and learning performance is very important, and, and maybe even a little bit more important than, than energy in this case, even though there are very simple ways of, of making sure that this doesn't have any energy penalties. So, it, so that explains, I think, why there's differences too, that there's just politics involved, basically. Thank you. And uh, one question about ASHRAE. Uh, they're asking, are you asking ASHRAE to revise their guidelines standards based on WHO guidelines? No, um, we are not asking them, and ASHRA is an independent uh, organization which defines their uh, standards on their own. We can provide them with the suggestion how they can modify, but this is, this is the work that is done through the committees and accepted by the board of directors uh, and, uh, of ASHRA. And uh, so uh, it, we, we basically do, do, not, do not ask them, but of course it is a, a wise approach to define the target values, target values for exposures. We should understand, and I didn't have time to say uh, that uh, during my presentation, but I think we should understand. We are not saying that WHO guidelines is a, you know, is a golden you know, set of rules. I mean, that we are not probably covering all of the pollutants, but at least we know that we should deal with those pollutants. And we are not even trying to deal with those pollutants in the current standards and guidelines. So this is extremely important that we accept this is the knowledge that we know. Let's build upon this knowledge and then develop this knowledge if there is new information coming. Thank you. And um, one of the last question, I believe, how can you have an harmonized label for a national ventilation strategy as it, as it, it is not a product? Yeah, maybe I can, can react to that. Uh, I think it's an excellent question, this, and, and in my experience, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to force people designing and installing ventilation systems, whether it's a national, uh, um, uh, let's see, um, uh, whether it's natural ventilation or mechanical ventilation. Uh, what is very important is that if, if uh, for example, a school board asks somebody to design their school, that you give them a very clear requirements, so you have performance requirements that tells people constructing it that it should not be too noisy, below 35 decibel, and it should have this and this amount of air, and it should not have any overheating in summer, etc. So you give them performance criteria, and basically that you uh, there's a relation with cost. Of course, the investment cost should 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 uh, be okay for that quality level you're aiming at, and then just make sure after it's delivered that you first measure if they give the, the performance as required so that, for example, noise level is below what you wanted it to be, and then you pay the last bill, and not, not before. So it's very much about not describing exactly how to do things, but more about making clear what the performances are that you are after. Yeah. I think we should understand and try to make sure that we consider the buildings not as a uniform, you know, as, a, as, a, as a just envelopes that uh, uh, basically separate us from uh, the outdoor environment. The buildings have different purposes. Uh, schools are to, for children to, to, to learn something. Offices are for people to basically do some, some work, and uh, residential buildings are to, for leisure. And I think that should also to some extent be reflected in the uh, ventilation requirements. Nevertheless, despite of saying that, I should say that health is a uniform uh, value in all of those, across all of those buildings. And there should be a basic requirement based on health for all those buildings. If you want to design the building based on other requirements, that you should at least meet the requirements for health and then go on with all the requirements, performance, uh, comfort, and so on and so on. Thank you, Pavel, and thank you, Atze. Um, I think us. that's yeah. all the time we have for the questions. Thank okay. you. And uh, if, if necessary, you can just always contact us of the, of the, uh, after the webinar by co con contacting us uh, at, our web, at our email addresses if there are uh, further clarifications. Thank you.